When signing up to become a Lyft driver, you have to decide what type of business entity to use. In today's video, I am going to talk to you about the different types of business entities you can use as a Lyft driver. Hi, my name is Andrew. I'm the managing attorney here at Malai Law, where we help entrepreneurs just like you start your businesses without having to deal with the complicated legal forms. Our done for you service is backed by over 2,700 plus five-star Google reviews, and we can help you start your business too. The purpose of these videos videos are to provide you with as much guidance and clarity in the beginning stages of your business. So if you haven't already, please make sure you hit the like, subscribe, as well as a bell notification so you don't miss out on any future video. The information I am going to talk about now is intended to be general information and it is always recommended to speak with a professional. Now before I start talking about the different types of business entities to use when signing up as a Lyft driver, allow me to provide you with a little bit more context. When when signing up to become a Lyft driver, when signing the agreement with Lyft, you're required to choose a business entity to use. There are different business entity options to use and the most popular options are going to be first option, which is a sole proprietorship. The second option, which is the LLC, also known as the limited liability company. And the third option is going to be the corporation. Prior to ever picking up your first passenger, it's very important that you handle these first steps. And what I mean by handle these first steps, I mean that you select the correct business entity that will benefit you most. Additionally, if you already did not know, when you become a Lyft driver, you're not becoming employed by Lyft. Lyft does not employ you. Instead, how the legal agreement works is instead of an employee, you're an independent contractor. As an independent contractor, you're responsible for your own actions. Now with that general context out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about the main purpose of today's video, which is what is the difference between using a sole proprietorship as a Lyft driver versus using an LLC or a corporation as a Lyft driver. When signing that contract to begin driving for Lyft, the default business entity option is the sole proprietorship. In other words, if you don't have an LLC, if you don't have a corporation, then by default, the business entity that will be selected is going to be the sole proprietorship. Now, if you're not familiar with how a sole proprietorship works, you don't need to file any legal documents or paperwork to create a sole proprietorship. All you would have to do is use your SSN when filling out the W-9 form. And in that case, again, by default, you would then be classified as a sole proprietorship. And that is how you're going to be classified when working as a Lyft driver. Now, there's a couple of drawbacks to using a sole proprietorship as a Lyft driver. The first drawback is personal liability. When you enter into that Lyft contract as a sole proprietor, you are personally liable for anything that happens on the job. In other words, Lyft would not be liable for anything that were to occur while driving on the job as a Lyft driver. And that's why you have the various options, sole proprietorship, LLC, corporation. You have these various options to choose from when entering into that Lyft agreement. In the event that some sort of incident occurs while on the job, because you would be personally liable as a sole proprietor, this potentially puts your personal assets at risk. Personal assets, including your personal bank account, your personal house, your personal car, etc. While those are the drawbacks, there is some convenience to operating as a sole proprietor. All you need is a social security number. You don't have to file any company documentation. You don't have to pay any filing fees. Again, it's very convenient, but the exposure to liability while on the roads is something to be mindful of. Alternatively, instead of a sole proprietorship, the other options, as I mentioned earlier, were an LLC and a corporation. Now with the sole proprietorship option out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about the two additional other options, which is the LLC and the corporation. The most popular option out of the LLC and the corporation is going to be the LLC. The LLC provides 
personal liability protection. Additionally, it's the easiest to operate and manage. And what I mean by operate and manage is there's less paperwork involved. There are no required annual meetings. There are no required board meetings. There's no required payroll, etc. So again, LLC is the most easiest business entity to operate and to form and to manage and to use as a Lyft driver. Now there's two major ways an LLC and a corporation differs. The first is going to be the way both business entities are taxed. And the second is going to be the requirements involved for each business entity. The bottom line is the LLC as well as the corporation provide personal liability protection, unlike the sole proprietorship. The LLC and the corporation provide personal liability protection, which means that if you contract with Lyft under either an LLC or a corporation, you will have personal liability protection, assuming you did not act negligent or you did not act intentionally, personal liability will protect your personal assets, your personal house, your personal car, your personal bank account, etc. And that is why the LLC or the corporation is the main options when deciding and when choosing to start driving as a Lyft driver. Now, if you want to learn whether or not an LLC or a corporation or an S corporation is best for you, if you want to learn which type of business entity is best for you, I highly recommend you speak with a a professional. And so with that, my final thoughts are while a sole proprietorship is the most convenient option to use when entering into a Lyft contract, because one, there's no filing involved, two, there's no filing fees involved, and three, all you need to provide is a social security number. Convenience does not outweigh liability. It also exposes you to the most risks. So again, if you want to learn more about sole proprietorship, LLCs, corporations, make sure you speak with a professional. If you happen to like this video, make sure you hit the like, subscribe, as well as the bell notification so you don't miss out on any future videos. It's time to invest in yourself. It's time to rise.